Good night, good night. Have a one done tonight. God is good and God is good all the time. My name is Irma J. Spirit of Divine. I'm here to give you a, a, show, a word on tonight. And we're going to talk about God promise to David. And we see it took a long time, but God came through for David. You know, so. It's going to come from 2 Samuel 7, 1 through 17. Now, this one, um, David was anointed since he was a teenager, since he was a boy. And he was under some. So, he um, was constantly being under some, running for his life. You know, so one day he prayed. He prayed about this promise, you know. Uh, and then God gave him his promise, you know. So he then it took 20 years, but he was a king. He the king over Israel, you know. And God said he's going to make his name great, you know. And so after the king was settled in his palace, you know, and the Lord had given him rest, you know, from all his enemies. Because it was time for him to settle. Time for him to prepare himself for the king, you know. So he gave him rest for, um, over his enemy, you know, because it half of his life, you know, he just running from enemies, you know, running from Saul, running from his son, you know. So God said, no, you, you need rest until I and, and prepare you for your uh, king. Now, David finally settled in his house, experiencing God's gift of rest from surrounding enemies. Now, he said to Nathan, the prophet, that here I am. Now, living in a house of Caesar while the art of God remained in a tent. You know, so so now, David is dwelling in stable, um, per permanent, and secure while the art is symbol of God present. Now, they replied to the king, whatever you have in mind, you know, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. You know, so David talked to um, Nathan. And, and, and he had told him, he told him what he had on his mind. He said, you go ahead on and do whatever you see best. You know, you go ahead on and do whatever you want to do. He said, the Lord is with you. You know, so whatever he want to do, God is with him. You know, Nathan told him. You know, he, he said, now David perceived it was in his heart to build a house for God. You know, so he told him. Now. He dreamed that he he wants to build his house, build a house, build a temple, you know, for God. You know, but God saw his dream. You know, God going to take that dream and he going to have someone, his son, to build this house, this temple. Now, it was a good work and fit for a king. Now, do you might think now it was proper time in it of, to, to being encouraged to do it. You know, so, but that night, the word of the law came to Nathan. You know, see, God know his dream. God know his heart. You know, so God coming towards, coming into, up here to, to Nathan. You know, now go and tell my servant David. You know, this is what the law has said. Are you the one to build me a house the way I am? You know, you see, David dreaming of this from his heart. He wants to dream. He wants to. He wants to make build this temple. You know. Now this message from Nathan, God was saying that He didn't want David to build a house for him. You know. Now we learn that um, that God did not want His temple built by words. You know. Now David had made this plan as a collective material, so that his 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 son Solomon. You know, could begin work on the temple as soon as he become king. You know, so God decided he don't want David to build the temple. You know, he want his son Solomon to do it. Because David had fallen in too much war. And a lot of the war was, was his doing. It wasn't that God doing. You know, remember he, he killed the uh, husband, had him to go to war. And he did that, you know, so he shed a lot of blood, David. You know, that don't mean he a bad person. God still love him and consider him a decent person. 
but God don't want him to be able to tell me. He wanted his son to do it. You know, so as soon as your son became, became king, you know, so now David had promised David that he would be the king over Israel, which he are now, but God don't want him to be a temple. Now, he finally is the king. He the king over Israel, you know, but God chose, you know, he don't want him to be a temple. He wants his son silent. Now, God gave me his, his wish, you know, he the king over Israel. You know, so I have not to wear in the house, you know, from the day that I brought um Israelite Israelite up out of Egypt. You know, to this day that I have been moving. Now they still carrying and they they had been God had delivered them from slavery from Egypt. Why ago? Long time ago. But guess what? Israelites still carry, you know, still carrying the art. They were supposed to be build a temple to put the on it. You know, so now David did not dream, you know, dreaming to build one for it. You know, so. From the, from the, uh, from the place to place, with the tent as many to well. So each place they go to, they got to carry this, they got to carry this on with them. They been supposed to build a temple. You know, and they're just carrying the, the carrying the tent with them everywhere they go. So now God feel like it is time for the temple, you know, to have not have anything permanent going to place to place since it brought to Israel up out of Egypt this day. You know, and God said yes in my time. Matter of fact, it it been time. He said he don't know why, you know, all these kings, you know, God had over Israel. Nobody had the initiative to, to say, let's build a temple temple for this, this art. They just chose to carry it around everywhere they go. You know, so whatever I have moved with all my Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers, who am I command, the shepherd, my people, Israel, why have you not built the house of sin? Now, see, God saying, David, been a, he been a king for a while now. And what God's saying, why you have not been built a temple for? You know, why not? Why why right now you chose to build one? You know, God said you should have been built this temple. You know, now you want to build a temple and I don't want you to build a temple. I want your son to build it now. You know, um now since David had been over Israelite, he had not Offered to build a temple up until now. You know, the, the tent had been on uh, travel with them under David care ever since God brought them out of Egypt. You know, so David been the king for a while. And that tent, they've been carrying around ever since they've been, they come out of Egypt. You know, so God saying, why have nobody been on this side to build a temple? They just chose to carry the tent around. And then they had so many kings. You know, Saul, Saul was the king before David got in sick. No, nobody, you know, decided to build a temple up until now. You know, so now then, tell me, servant David, now this is what the Lord Almighty said. I took you from pastor and from tenant the flocks and I turned you ruler over my people. So God, God let him know because he in his feelings. He, he won't he wants to uh he wants to build his temple. You know, so God God has said, I, I took you from all your brothers. I chose you from all your brothers. I took you from out the fair. I took you from tent tenting with the sheep. You know, I made you a king. You know, so God said, I he said, God said, the promise I had made to you, you sitting in it right now. You know, but he he, he was like he still wanted to build the temple. You know, a good thing is his son. It ain't nobody else. You know, so God reminded David of, of three things. You know, God had done for David in the past. Now, God took David from being a shepherd to be a prince. God took him from being a shepherd. He was a shepherd in the field. And God took him to, to the palace. You know, took him to be a priest, prince. Now, over Israel, he took him following the sheep. 
that be um, prince over my people. You know, he went from, from a shepherd to being a, a prince, a priest over his over his people. You know, so now God reminds David what he did for him because David is sad and he is not building the temple. You know, but God had letting them know. I took you from being a, sh a shepherd, took you to the palace, you know, and, and, and be a, the, the king over my people. You know, I took you and chose you from all your brothers. You know, you the one that I had picked. You had about 18 brothers. And God picked him out of all them brothers. Took him from out the field and brought him to the path. You know, but David wants to be at a house. You know, so I have been with you wherever you had gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the name of a greatest man on earth. They got greatest man on earth. But God said, I'm going to take you and make you greater than them. You know, and God, God has said, God said, I was with you wherever you went. You were running from Saul in that cave, I was with you. You know, you are running from your enemies, I was with you. You are running from your son, I was with you. God said, wherever you went, I was with you. I was protecting you because God still hadn't had, had put him in his position yet. Now, God made a promise to him, you know, and God protected him until he got in his seat. So, since you weren't in position yet, wherever you went, I was with you. You know, and, and I had cut off your enemies. You know, cut off your enemies so, so you can settle here with my people. You know, and so, and God said, I'm going to make your name great. See, he been, he been a king for a while. Nobody don't know too much about David. You know, and, and, and David had said, nobody don't know me. No, I'm king. Because all they know that he was under um, Saul. You know, God about to change that. All they know he was under Saul. They don't know that he a king. So God said, okay, don't worry about that. I'm going to make your name great. You know, I'm going to make your name. They got greatest men on this earth, but I'm about to make your name greater than them. You know, so now God had established David and give him rest over his enemy. Now God also said he will make David's name great. Now this is God's promise to David. Why David was running from Saul? You know, his enemies, you know, God said, I will be with you. You know, I was with you wherever you went. Now, remember, David had got anointed since he was 17 years old. But it took 20 years, you know, on those 20 years, God was protecting David. Now, since 17 years old, up until now, you know, he wasn't in position because God made a promise to him. You know, made a promise for when he get in position. That means God will protect him. You know, he went through something. You know, just like me and everybody else. You know, that don't mean you, you're not going to go to nothing. Because God is right there. Look at Job. You know, that, that don't mean nothing. It's just that when it gets so severe, God will step in. You know, he went through some trials. You know, I went through some, I've gone through some trials. You know, God is right there. He will step in when it's needed. You know, so that's why God said, I, I was watching over you. It, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't going to let, let nothing go too far. You know, I was watching you wherever you went. You know, so David, David had some enemy. You know, I be feeling bad sometimes, but then when you look back in this Bible, you know, how David had so many enemies. How, how Jesus, Jesus has people hate him and all this. You, you know, so it's, it's, it's like when you're under God umbrella, you got to, you got to, you got to be ready for the pressure. You got to be ready for the pressure, you know. So now God has established David, established David, and he made a promise to David. He's going to make his name great. You know, he's been in position for so, so many years right now. You know, not for about two, three years, he he been in position. And nobody still don't know he rid of the king over Israel because he was just under Saul. All they, all they know that, okay, that's David. Okay, yeah, we, we know David. He, he was under um, Saul. You know, so that's all they, they know. But God about to change that. 
you know. So God promised to David why David was running from Saul. You know, God was saying that he was with him. You know, when he thought he was alone, God was right there. You know, saying, I will, I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own. You know, and no longer be disturbed with wicked people that will not oppress them, you know, um, anymore as they did in the past, past beginning. Now, see, Israelite, they let people come in their land. And, and they push them out, boss them out, put, even put them back in slavery sometimes on their own land. You know, so God said, God said there will be no more disturbance from the wicked. You know, we're we going to build something. You know, we're going to build them a house on their own. You know, we ain't going to have all this disturbance from the, um, from the wicked, you know, oppressing them and, and, and putting them out their own land. You know, so God said, God said it's not going to happen no more. So even though it will not continue to oppress them as they have done, you know, and I will provide a homeland for my people, Israel, you know, planted them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Now he, he decided to have a, a, a secure place, you know, for Israel that no one. I'll be able to disturb them, you know, so, and, and I have done ever since, you know, the time I appointed you leader over my people, Israel, I will also give you rest from your enemy, you know, the Lord declare, you know, to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. Now, God, God is talking about established David. He's going to establish David with his home. He's going to establish David, name great. You know, he about to set David up real good. You know, he run about, you know, I, I, I've been a king for a while now. Nobody don't know, okay, okay. God about to, God about to make your name great. Everybody going to know about David. You know, they know David. They know David under Saul. They about to know that David is a king over Israel. You know, so God promised to David a future, you know, appointing him a place for his people so they won't be disturbed, so they have their own place. Now, God will make a house for David, establish a kingdom in a place for David, make David name great. Now, these are the promise. These are the promise that God um, given to David. This is the promise that God is giving to David, you know. So when your days are over and you is, is rest with your um ancestor, I will raise your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish the kingdom. Now God telling God telling David, when your time is ready, you know, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make sure that that will be the king. It's going to be your own flesh and blood. You know, there ain't going to be nobody else. Ain't nobody else is going to sit on this throne. It's going to be your own flesh and blood. Now, see, Jesus is going to sit on that throne. Because Jesus is uh, is an ancestor. Jesus is kin to, to, uh, in the bloodline of David. You know, because David, you know, nobody, you know, just only David flesh and blood is going to be able to sit on that, on that throne. You know, and so these words from God to David, this is a powerful promise, you know, where application right then and far from then, you know. So now other promises is in David's son Solomon, now who will indeed build a house or a temple for the dwelling of God's glory. And this temple is going to be beautiful, you know. So David had good taste, God have good taste, you know, because God going to take his idea, and make that temple so beautiful, you know. You know, David gonna, you know, David gonna build it, but he he gonna build it by God instruction, you, you know. Oh, uh, now he is the one that who will build the house for in my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever, you know. Now Jesus Christ, you know, is um David, is David bloodline that that will never die, and nothing can bring him down from the throne. 
Now God promised that he would he would secure his throne. Now this is a promise. I'm gonna secure your throne. Nobody is gonna be able to get on this throne. You know, it's gonna only be by your bloodline. You know, they Jesus coming along, but that's your bloodline. You know, nobody but for your blood, but except your bloodline is gonna sit on this throne. You know, so I will be his father and I will be my son. Now, when he does wrong, I will punish him with the wrath, you know, by men with um, uh, in conflict by the human pain. Now, God said he's going to be Solomon's son, you know, because he's going to be, you know, instructing on Solomon with his temper and stuff. And if he get a line, God will talk about, I'm going to whoop you with this wrath. You know, so Solomon want to be in, you know, he want to behave. You know, so details the relationship that God will have with his coming son. And see, you don't have the son yet. He said the coming son of David. God said that he will be the father in, 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 in this man. The father to his son. And now this is important and that we will remember. Now, when this promise is being made, we, that in the New Covenant Church, are used to ideas of God being our Father. You know, so when he said that, you know, that means he all our fathers. You know, so that's what he was telling David. Now, your house and your kingdom will endure forever. Now, before your throne will be established. You know, and so it, everything gonna be established forever. You know, uh, everything gonna be established. You know, for the kingdom will endure forever on the throne. Now, David request to build the temple was good, but God said no. Now, this does not mean that God reject David. You know, in fact, you know, God was planning to do something even greater in in David's life. You know, then allowed him to build a temple. You know, so just because God didn't want him to build a temple, God had something greater. You know, greater by his his throne. You know, nobody gonna be able to sit on this throne but David bloodline. You know, so that was a blessing from God to David. Now he don't have to worry when he took Paul. You know, everybody on his bloodline gonna be sitting on that throne. You know, so that's a promise. Just like he gave Abraham a promise, he stuck with it. He he gonna stick with that promise with David. You know, so in David's life, then allowed him to build the temple. But although God, uh, also, although God had turned down David's request, now he promised to continue to have David forever. You, you know, so so he he been dealing with David since David was like a little boy. A, a teenager, you know. So Nathan reports to David all the words, you know, of this entire revelation. So the law will raise up David, offspring, and the law will establish the kingdom, the kingdom that will never be destroyed. You know. Now he will build a house for David. You know, in the Lord, with his throne or the kingdom will be established forever. God made his name great. Now, David feel like he been a king for a while. A couple of years, two years, he been a king. He like, nobody don't know that I'm a king. All they know I'm David, you know, from under Saul, you know. So God said, you know, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. You know, I'm going to make your name great. See, there was two things that God had did for David. You know, David came with a dream. He came with an idea, you know, that he want to build a temple. But God said no. But God has something greater. Sometimes when doors close, God have a better one. Sometimes when you reject it, God will have something better. You, you know, uh, everything in our life, we is not going to get a, a open door all the time. We're not going to get a yes all the time, you know, but God will always have something better. You know, I say no, you know, but I got this, you know, so, so he said no with the, with um, the temple.
but that he's going to make your name great. They got greatest men on this earth, but I'm going to make your name greater than them. You know, you're going to be among them. Because you remember when I put out on uh, Jonathan's son, you know, all David was doing was sitting at the table with number kings, you know, because God had set that up. God had made his name great. So all the king was sitting at the table every day with David eating. You know, sitting at the table. You know, treat him like a king that he are. You know, and God did that. You know, at first you sit at the table by himself. Oh, well, I'm, I'm a king. Nobody don't know. They don't treat him. Well, okay, well, when God made his name great. You know, remember when that, that boy, he, you know, went to him. You know, David was sitting at the table, nothing with kings. Every day, they were sitting at the table with kings. Because God said, I was going to make your name great. I made your name great. God said, nobody but your bloodline was going to sit on that throne. He meant what he said. So don't you worry when you have to dip out. You don't you worry when thinking somebody else was going to be on the throne. You know, nobody but the bloodline. And then I made your name great. So God did two things for him because he was sad because he wasn't building that temple. But see, oh, God always have a backup. He always have a backup plan. You know, I said no, but I got this. You know, so his name, his name turned out great. So, I mean, God promised had came through. Because then when I did that story with that little boy, the, you know, he told that little boy, you're going to sit with, you going to sit with us every day. You know, number king sit at this table for breakfast and lunch and dinner. You know, David had that at first. Oh, they know he was David unto Saul. But when God made his name great, God made sure number kings came around David. You know, and so number kings sit at his table. So God came through and made promise for, for David. God had to let him know, I took you from being a shepherd boy. You know, I brought you into the palace. I chose you among your brothers. You know, and took you to the palace. You know, God had to let him know. You know, I, I, I did a lot for you. You know, but he wanted to build that temple so bad. He wanted to build that temple so bad. And God had to let him know. Had, had to let him know. I chose you among your brothers. I chose you among your brothers. I took you from being a shepherd boy to a king. From a shepherd boy to be a king over Israel, brought him to a palace. You know, so his life been established by God. So that's all I have for you today. You, you know, so a lot of time, God tell us no. You know, he tell us no, but he has something else better. You know, so many doors closed in my face. But God always said, I got something else for you. You know, and so that's the same thing he did with David. And so, did God protect him this whole time, since 17 years old up until now? You know, but until he got in his position. You know, God said, I was with you wherever you went. You know, you was running from Saul. I was right there. You know, running from your enemies and, and your son. I was right there. I was going to, I was going to protect you. You know, when I need it. You know, so God going to allow us to go to something like he did with Joe. You know, when he see that the devil would have got out of land, you know, he was going to jump in. You know, so that's all I have for you tonight. You know, y'all have a blessed and safe night and i see y'all in the next video.